Hello everyone, Marcus Wolf here, and I'm actually creating a video on my iPhone. It's not actually from, from, uh, you know, uh, on a computer or Elgato. I know, it's, it's kind of strange to be doing this again. <laughs> I haven't done it since, like, w um, Detroit Become Human, I think, with, when I recorded straight off my iPhone. But anyway, uh, that's not about that. What this is about is, I'm going to be talking about how to connect your Elgato with the Retro Tank. Because I noticed, at least from when I was searching at the time I made this video, that there... There isn't exactly a lot of videos, uh, unless I did a very terrible job searching, which I would not put it past me, on how to connect the Elgato with the Retro Tank. So I thought I'd put in my two cents of what I figured out through trial and error and see what works. So, obviously, here is me knocking over a shoebox and my Elgato card with a lot of wires on it. And let me just say, uh... <laughs> This is too many wires. It... Note to you guys, please, make sure that you do this safely. I, I don't know how safe this is, but uh, I'm amazed I haven't burned down my room yet. And it's been two years. <laughs> uh, but that said, I have my Elgato uh, right here. There is the... <clears throat> oh, wow, excuse me. There is the output, which is going to be connected to the television. That That part's obvious. And then there's going to be two wires. One is going to be connected from the game system that you're, um, uh, that you're game capturing. In this case, right now, it is the PS4 that it's connected to. And this other piece... There we go, I should have prepared better. This other piece here connects to the computer. Your computer, your laptop, whichever one. So that way, the image will be fed into your laptop. Now, be now, before you can get fed in there, you need to have the Elgato's Game Capture uh, app downloaded onto your computer. Otherwise, the video will go nowhere. The Elgato only works, as far as I'm, as far as I know, with that app. So that's that. So that's just a basic rundown on how to connect it with your with the PS4, PS5, Xbox. Uh, uh, switch those systems. You just need these three wires, and you are good to go. For those of you that play the older games, this is where the 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 retro tank. God dang it! You can tell I did not rehearse this. <laughs> uh, this is where the retro tank comes in. What you need, what this does, is converts the image into a uh, readable format that the Elgato can capture. Otherwise, things like the PS2, a PS1, uh, I think it can also go as far as the SNES, but do not quote me on that. But it can go pretty far. I think also Nintendo 64. This will convert the image, image data gotten from the game into a readable format for the HD 60S Elgato. And yes, this requires so much more power power cables. Now, before I continue on, let me just be clear here. On the RetroTink website, it says that the Elgato, yeah, that the Elgato is not compatible with the RetroTink. At the time it was created, I'm not looking at my computer right now, so I don't know when. I, I want to say 2017 or something. Huh? But at the time it was created, these things were not fit for, for the Elgato. So you cannot record from them. There's even a warning on the site that says, Warning! RetroTink is not compatible or may not be compatible with the Elgato capture card. It's been four or five years now. That warning's a lie <laughs> at this point. They just failed to update it. Now that said, if you want to, let's say I'll use my PS2 as an example here. You want to play a game off the PS2. You're going to have to... Where is it? There we go. You're gonna have to input these, uh, these, these cables, these colored cables. I forget what they're called, to be perfectly honest. And, uh, you're gonna have to connect it onto the RetroTink Mini. I have used a... 
Oh man, I lost the box. Oh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna just show it on the screen as well. But I used a particular set of cables that is built specifically for the PS2. Technically, you could use a different set, but... You run the risk of it not working and uh, wasting your time and getting aggravated. So just be careful of that. In this case, I have a PS2, so I use PS2 specific cables. Thankfully, it's also color coded, as you can see back there. It's kind of hard to see. It's blue, red, and and yellow. Blue, white, red, and yellow uh, inside a blue case. And then there's also this piece. I am not technologically. Um, I, I don't have good, I am not very good with technology, okay, so I don't know the terms, but if you give me instructions, I know what to do, what to plug in, and whatnot. So, you need these four bits in order to feed the image from the PS2 onto the retro tink. Once you're done on this side, you have the second side to contend with. Now this part, the second part, is just like using the Elgato. You need a HDMI cable. And from there, you are going to connect the cable to... I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you're going to connect the cable into the... If I can get it there. There we go. Into the input slot. It's a bit blurry. I'm so sorry. Uh, one second. It's still blurry. Oh, it's forever blurry, but you can see that it says that it's the input section. You're going to input this into the input. And then, you reconnect it back onto your computer, your laptop, whatever it is. So now, the PS2 is getting its image converted into the RetroTINK, which in turn is being fed into the Elgato, which in turn goes into your laptop. Uh, right there. Mm -hmm. Your laptop right there. Just one thing to note. When you are using the RetroTINK, there is no on button. There, there, there legit is no on button anywhere. This system runs on a separate power source. And that's where this white cable comes in. The white cable, you need to plug in into an available USB port in order to pull power into the system. Again, there is no on button, off button. There is no cache of backup battery. It just runs on USB. So, if you're in the middle of recording and you accidentally unplug the power, well, the recording kind of stopped because the image is gone. There's no backup power. It's kind of stupid, honestly, but there's not much you can do on that. Now, so that means you need to... And this cable that I have right now is like three feet. I should definitely buy a longer one because I had to put my retro tank so close to my laptop and sometimes it makes recording a bit of a hell. I also do have my PS4 here which I think could work technically except that I need the PS4 to be on at all times including not being in sleep mode. So that itself is a bit of a headache. But yes, if you you could also use like a power bank, something that has power for the USB just plug it in, and then you'll have it on. Uh, let me see if I can plug it in for a quick hottest of moments. Give me a hot moment. Okay, so now my retro tank is plugged in, and as you can see right here, there's a power button right here. This, this shows that it is on. There is a light switch. It's on. If this light is not on, you are not recording anything. The, the, the image from your PS2, PS1, whatever, it's not being fed through here. So, you got to make sure this light is on. There are also a couple of other features that I have not tested out yet. Well, I have, but I haven't noticed anything... ...interesting and new about it. Like, there is this button here. Uh, let me see if I can read it real quick. Uh, it's upside down. The words are pretty small, so if you have bad eyesight, I am so sorry. It says... It's a COMB. Retro and Auto. Again, I am not sure what that does. Uh, again, I'm not technologically minded, so I could be totally missing something obvious with that. But as it is, in the base, in, in the bare bones explanation that I give in, that's how the retro tank works. You connect these cables into the retro tank, 
and then you connect this HDMI into the input section of the Elgato, which in turn you connect the other end into your laptop or computer, whichever you have. And that's how you do, and that's how the RetroTink works. I hope this ends up helping some of you folks that do not know about the RetroTink, know about the RetroTink but aren't sure how it works with the with the Elgato with the Elgato. If you want proof that it works, you can go ahead and look at my Chrono Cross uh, test video. That was done using the RetroTink and the uh, Elgato 360 360 Elgato 60S setup. So for sure it works. Granted, I only made one video on it, so in terms of long-term, I don't know if there will be any issues that may arise from long-term use or something that needs to be kept in mind. I should have done my research on that, obviously. <laughs> but again, I'm a technological idiot, so... Mm. But in the bare-bones format, this all works. I, I hope it does end up helping any of you that did not know how to set it up, had an idea but wasn't sure what was going on, and hopefully... You guys that are interested in recording the older games will have a better idea of how to work. So that said, thank you for listening in. I know my explanation could have been a bit better at times. <laughs> oh boy, T uh, it, it, it's, it's a little hazard when you're trying to ad-lib everything and you have no script. But I, I do my videos with no script anyway, so... Woo! Later everyone! <laughs>